Hi everyone, my name is Abdul Rahman Siddiqui, aka Pakistani Pepper. I'm a high school teacher and Google Certified Educator. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use rubrics to assess your student learning and guide their progress in Google Classroom. If you're completely new to Google Classroom, I've linked my previous tutorial above and put it in the description below, so be sure to check it out. Today I will be showing you how to create a rubric in Google Classroom, attach that rubric to an assignment, and how to use that rubric to actually assess student work. I am also going to be showing you how students can use the rubric to help self-assess and guide their writing. Quick note, on my channel there are many Google Classroom tutorials and some lighthearted teacher comedy skits. If that appeals to your interests, consider subscribing. Now let's begin the tutorial on how to use rubrics in Google Classroom right now. Begin by going to google.com and signing in to your teacher account. On the top right, click Classroom to get started with Google Classroom. Click on the class for which you wish to create the rubric and the assignment. In the top panel, go to Classwork and click on Create. Under this section, you're going to create an assignment. Provide a title and instructions for the assignment. Also create any documents that you need to create for students such as templates or any reference docs. Be sure to make a copy for each student. At this point normally I would add a file where I would select a rubric PDF that I had on my computer. It uploads quickly and is accessible, but if you notice, it is just a PDF. My student can't really read it necessarily, or even if they do, they would have to open a different window. Not to mention, I can't really use this to grade. So what I'm actually going to do is delete it. Instead, after assigning points and due dates and topics for the assignment, I am going to click on Rubric. And where it says plus rubric is where I will actually start to create my own. Now I can reuse an older one and import one from Sheets, but that can't happen until I've actually created one to begin with. So click on create rubric. At this point, you're going to see a new screen which is going to ask you to add the criteria that you will use to evaluate student work. The first criteria I'm using is organization. You can use whatever you wish. Here in the criterion description, go ahead and describe what the actual criterion means. Organization, for example, is how organized and coherent your essay is, or writing is in this case. Now, this is where I place the maximum points required for the first descriptor. And I'm going to say that this is going to be worth 25 points. Now, this is where you can give the title, so this is where I will say exemplary, excellent, perfect, whatever, the highest level of organization. And now in the description is where I'm actually going to paste or write out the description for what an exemplary or excellently organized paper is. As you can see, this shows that for 25 points, your paper needs to be ex excellently organized, but when I hit the plus, it creates a new category. This is the next level, the 20-point category. So if the student meets this level, which is going to be strong or good or above average, And this is where I say that was almost perfect. So instead of the 25 maximum points you could have gotten here, you got 20. The next step is going to be just as simple. I go to the plus again, where I add a level. This time, instead of 20, let's say, 
a student only earned 15 points for organization because their organization was adequate or satisfactory. And the description this time demonstrates what an adequately or satisfactorily organized essay or piece of writing would look like. And this time the writing is mostly coherent and organized, but has some errors. And finally, I go to plus, and now I add the lowest level. That this is where you get only 10 out of a maximum of 25 points for organization. I call this the inadequate or unsatisfactory section. And the description this time is going to be that the writing simply isn't clear. It lacks logical organization or coherence. And with this, as you can see, 25 points have been accounted for. Now I go to the second area of my rubric, the level of content. Again, the title will be whatever you wish, as will the description. Once again, the maximum points that I'm allowing for this area is 25, and notice how the actual assignment grade changes to 50. Since it's the full 25, this is the level, I can call it 4, I can call it exemplary, excellent, whatever I wish. And once again, this time I describe for the student what a level of content that is excellent or exemplary looks like. I add plus, and now I start attaching the levels below it, just as I had above. 20 points, above average, and the description for what above average level of content looks like. The next level, 15 points. Again, it is average or satisfactory. And now the description for what an average or satisfactory response would look like. And finally, once again, the lowest level of only 10 points, unsatisfactory responses, and the description for what an unsatisfactory level of content would look like. At this point, I can now once again go to the criterion, assign the title, assign the description, the points value, the title for each level, and the description for each level. And finally, repeat the process for the final criterion that you're going to be developing. As you can see, I now have four criterion, each worth 25 points. I can duplicate, delete, move criterion up or move criterion down based on each individual one, but they all add up to 100 points which is the same as the number of points I'd assigned for the assignment. At this point, I can save. The student has the rubric, and even if you forgot to set the points to 100 or you don't want to set them to 100, the rubric will adjust the math accordingly once you actually assign it. So go ahead and assign your assignment, and the student should now be able to see it with the actual rubric. So let's head on over and see what the student would see in their assignment. Once again, the student would log into their account by going to google.com. In the top right, they also are going to go to Google Classroom. Here, they will see the assignment that is due, but this time something unique is going to happen. When they go to the actual essay or whatever you have assigned, they will, as always, see the document where they have to type or whatever you create them, but they will also see a rubric. 
Their rubric has four sections, and when they click on each individual section, it actually gives them the descriptors of what they need to do in order to succeed. Quick note, be sure to make the descriptions in your rubrics as clear as possible. The clearer they are, the more students will actually be able to use them to improve their writing, and the less work for us, the teachers. Now let's get back to it. Once the student has figured out what they need to do, they can click on the document you've created for them and actually start typing. Now that the student has typed their assignment, they can click Turn In. And before they can turn in, it will again send them to that same page where they can choose to refer back to the rubric or just simply turn in. And at this point, the student has completed their work for the first section. Now, back on the teacher end, you'll see that one student has turned in their assignment. Now, when I click on the student's work, I am not only going to see their essay, but I'm also going to see my rubric hidden on the side. So after reading their essay and making sure that I am making suggestions that they can improve on, I am now going to click on the right where it says grade and start looking at the rubric. For each individual section, it lets me decide how many points out of the 25 I had allotted for each category I want. And if I'd forgotten what I'd like to see in organization, I can just click on it and I also see the levels. So let's say I decide that this person has met a level of exemplary or excellent organization. I can click on that and automatically populates the 25 points for that section. Now level of content. Maybe I don't think this is excellent. Maybe I think this is simply average. I can go ahead and click on that and assigns that point value here. And now out of the current 100, the student has 40. Now I go to development. And this time I see what the student has done. And maybe the student's development is above average. So as you can see, he got the 20 out of 25. Or maybe I got tired and I just gave it a 15. And finally, for grammar, the grammar is excellent, so I decide to post that. The student has gotten 80 out of 100, all rubric based. And I can tell them, focus on the parts of the rubric that you did not do perfectly on. I post the private comment to the student, and then I return their assignment so that they may use it for a second draft if they wish. And as you can see, when I go to the student, the rubric points are right there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we provided rubric-based feedback to our student. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to use rubrics in Google Classroom. If you have any questions or any suggestions for future videos, anything that you would like to learn further, do leave it in the comments below and I'll be sure to address it to the best of my ability. This is Paxani Pepper saying peace out, stay peppery, and don't forget, sometimes life's best lessons are in the stories we hear least. Have an awesome day, guys.